What's happening, my beautiful people? My name is Dirty Mike, and today, my friends, you guys liked the previous video where I went through the advanced body faint. So today we're going through the advanced scoop turn, which in my opinion is the best skill move around that edge of the box, maybe just inside the box. And as I showcased in the previous installment, this will be similar where I'm not telling you how to do the move, but I'm showing you different scenarios, how to set it up, what you're looking for. Basically, you're going to get the vision of me, what I'm seeing when I'm on the pitch. And some of you guys might want to remake and replicate, maybe not, but that's what I'm throwing out there. If you enjoy the content and you want to see more of the advanced tutorials, whether it's skill moves, breakdown play, unlocking the midfield, which is coming soon, drop a thumbs up. That tells me everything is good money. And if you have any suggestions, ideas, feedback, other tutorials, other tips, the comments, baby, let's make it happen. Woo! You see that? The dirty vision. And the scoop turn is basically a fake shot at a diagonal uh, with a four-star skiller. If you're stationary, if you're moving around, then you get the running scoop turn. You need a five-star skiller. We're not going to even discuss the running scoop turn. I actually find the stationary scoop turn to be more effective. Uh, and in the first uh, freeze frame here, we're on that edge of the box, like I previously mentioned. And I can see the defender is cheating to the inside. So I'm going to utilize that. And whenever you see uh, a defender overplaying or trying to anticipate your turn, the scoop turn is quick enough. And it's also a skill move that you can do off the bounce, kind of like a fake shot. Most skill moves you can't. And if you don't understand or you're not writing that down or doodling it just right, what I mean off the bounce, you receive a pass, the ball's still bouncing in the air, you got to take it down and, and make sure that then you can execute the skill move. You've got full control. But however, the fake shot and the, and the scoop turn, they don't play by that rule, which it's a beautiful thing. We can appreciate that, but it gives it a little more versatility. Uh, and, and that's all I'm showing here is which way I'm going, but more importantly, why I'm scoop turning in that direction. It's because I see the defender, and this happens very quickly, uh, but as you play more FIFA, as you go through uh, a lot of different scenarios and you see the same situations, we're always trying to fight to get in the box from the edge. All right, That's a money position, especially at high-level FIFA. If you're in Division One, if you're in the final of drafts, if you're playing FET Champs, you will find yourself constantly right around that edge of the box. People have bend but don't break defense. And and that's where you got the battle of how can you be creative and get inside the box? Am I using, you know, some pace control? Am I using a scoop turn? Am I able to run by him? Maybe a quick little tiki taka and so forth and so on. I don't know how we got that finish. I might maybe I shouldn't have been shooting from there. I'll take it. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, but the setup was premium Ben Arfa. I salute you. How you salute me? And the next example I, I just want to show you another kind of a situational uh, and I set this up relatively well in my opinion. So we've got Gareth Bale. I call it the setup. Uh, I've turned my body. Look at this. I've turned my body to the inside, which tells my opponent, oh, he's going to come to the inside. Maybe he's looking to pass across. Maybe he's going to attack me to the inside or he's trying to drop something back. Perfect. I'm going to go for that. And that's all part of the bait. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do here is to bait my opponent. And when I've turned my body to the inside, I'm showing you the goods, at least that's what you think, then I'm scoop turning the other direction. And it's quick, uh, and it's it's great to be manipulative. Though that didn't come out right. Manipulative. There we go. Correction. I did go to speech classes. I remember when I was a youngster, if you guys ever had issues pronunciating different words, I was part of that crew. I went to my own little special class. Not a special bus or anything like that, no. No. My mind was working great, but my mouth just couldn't catch up to what was happening here. The Mars was, oh, it was a struggle. But that's the setup. Uh, and you can use this on the sideline very well because even if he guesses correctly, maybe he recovers, you're going to get a corner kick. You're going to get a throw in. You're going to get fouled. Maybe you're going to get a penalty. It's always a good outcome. And that's what it's all about is increasing your efficiency while still being creative. And the scoop turn is a much more creative uh, technique than the fake shot because it kind of has that swooping motion versus the fake shot that's very straightforward where you're doing the quick turn uh, and it's not as effective as it was in the previous years. I can still put together a video talking about advanced fake shots. It still has a lot of value. I still use it plenty. But the scoop turn for me, yeah, I hammered it in. The scoop turn for me gives you just so much more to go with or to go off of. Another example here, so I'm looking at the defenders and the pass that you're thinking, okay, he's got to make that pass to the inside where you're seeing your other striker. And I felt like maybe they're going to cramp that. They're going to cover that up. It looks like he's coming back, and that defender, that center back, looks like he's stepping up. And that's what I wanted to showcase. And that's why I'm turning the other way. I don't think my opponent is controlling the other center back that's on me. 
And that's based on seeing movement. And you can see this very quickly. And you don't need to be at a LAN event to see who your opponent is positioning, who he's moving. Because if somebody's just standing in front of you, most likely it's the AI. Or maybe he's holding the contain button. Either way, you can attack that guy. And a lot of people ask me, what do you do against people that contain? What do you do against people that don't defend? You can run at them. Now, the scoop turn might not fake them out, but it's a good starting point. And if you're stationary, you're not moving, then you're going kind of slow. But after a scoop turn, whew, we're in there, like swimwear. I haven't used that one in a while, but we're able then to turn and get to full speed relatively quickly. And you can combine it with another skill, which you're going to see in this example. But that was my reasoning. When I'm looking at, at what could be open, I just felt like he was chasing back. Now I'm taking the line. He switches to that center back. We hit him with a Burba, extra pass. It all works out. Nice little piece of shielding there. Yeah, I appreciate that. And uh, the, the next bit of examples, I want to talk about buying options. And, and buying options is where you're more so looking at using the scoop turn for hold up play to buy some additional time. Uh, and I'm going to show you what I'm looking at and why I'm scoop turning. All right, which I think is, is very helpful because a lot of people know how to do skills but don't know how to add them into the game in an effective way. You just don't want to do skills to say you could do skills. So in this example here, hold up play. I've got the ball. I'm shielding. What's beautiful about the scoop, you can do it straight out of the shield and straight out of the face-up dribble. Ooh, it's a beautiful thing. A lot of skill moves you can come out of the, uh, the, the face-up dribble and go straight into skills. So, uh, the shield, not as much, but this is a good combo. So I'm looking at that man and I'm hoping that he's going to overlap I might have another option as well. I see the second overlap behind him. Either way, after the scoop turn, I should have an open pass. And I don't know if I'm going to end up feeding the man in the middle or if I'm feeding the man out of the wing who then might, in turn, drop it back off to the man in the middle. But either way, I'm holding up the play and adding the scoop turn makes it a little more creative, gets me the angle that I need. Here we go. And if you're playing, like I said, high-level FIFA, you've got to be creative. Get a very favorable bounce there. Just touches the crossbar. Just touches. It's a tad bit. Uh, but I'll take it. They all count. Uh, and it's just good buildup. It's just solid buildup where your opponent wasn't able to put you down in the predictable category, which is important. Uh, another example here. I've got three options, and all of them are covered sort of right now. So let me explain why. Uh, the man behind me, I think it's Griezmann, he's got a guy right on him. The timing is wrong. If I hit a through ball right now, it's not going to work. My back's to him, not going to work. The second option, I could lay it off, but he's got like four guys around him. So after I lay it off, what am I going to do? It could be a hospital ball. That's no good. Uh, and then the last man, I think is Rykard, who looks like he's overlapping. He's open, but he might be more open after a skill. He's still coming in late, but he's going to be great. See how you shift like that? Eh. That was ridiculous. Okay, but that's my reasoning in my mind. Oh, it's actually uh, going to be Rui Costa, excuse me. But I can see that he's coming in late. The long hair must have got me. I don't know what happened. Uh, and it turns out being a goal, I chose the right option. But either way, I need to buy additional time. Uh, and then this is the last example. Oh, it's just one of those beautiful moments. Uh, special, special moment. That's why legends, you got to have them in your squad. Provide speed from the shield position. Remember, I talked about that. So I'm in the shield. I'm holding back. Yeah, just like this. Now, I need something to get me out of this position. I need to jump out of there. And what's great is after a scoop turn, coming out of the shield once again, you can combine skill moves. It's a, it's a good combination. It's an opener. Uh, and that's what you're going to see here. Rui Costa, he's holding up the play. I appreciate you, Rui. You've done a lot of great things for me. I'm actually using him in this weekend league. Uh, hopefully, he performs. I haven't finished the games yet. Uh, but following the, uh, the scoop turn, I'm going to go straight into the face of drill, which allows me to get the correct angle and just, oh, hoo -hoo. That, that's nice right there. That makes me feel a certain type of way inside. I appreciate you, Rui. Uh, had him in a lot of different teams. I also loved Bird Camp. I actually mentioned that I think Bird Camp is better than Rui Costa. Of course, it's going to cost you a little bit more. I'm not sure about this Team of the Year crash either on these high-rated players. I see people discussing things on Twitter. We're going to have SBCs to cover the, the cheaper guys. And then the high-rated players, we're still in a regional qualifier month. I think people are very interested in having the Ronaldos having the Gareth Bales, having the Legends, and so forth and so on. I don't know if we're going to see this price drop that people are trying to anticipate. And the last bit of examples is you've got to know your team, know your personnel, and there's got to be a creative way to get the ball on your strong foot or to open up a little bit of space right here on the edge of the box area once again. But it's so important because if you have a left footer on the left side, which I recommend, you need to have uh, an ability to get them on their dominant foot. Guys like Gareth Bale... What you're seeing here, I, I have no idea how he slots at home. Guys like uh, Antoine uh, Griezmann, you got to get it on his left foot. 
both of them are a little bit lackluster, a little bit disappointing on their weak foot, especially Griezmann. Griezmann, for me, brilliant left foot. Terrible right foot, like two-star. I know it says three-star, but it feels like a two-star, in my opinion. And here's another dominant foot switch-up. But just another example, very similar. Catch the ball. I'm open open my angle. I don't want to hit that with the right foot. That's no good for me. So we're going to whoo -hoo, back over to the left. And just adding that little bit of some... Eh, it makes your opponent have to think a little bit more. Uh, and it buys you maybe a half second to get that shot or to get that angle to provide yourself an opportunity to score more goals and to have that creativity. But if you enjoyed the content, make sure to drop a thumbs up. Welcome to the channel. I'm happy to have you, man. I'm working hard on this tutorial. I'm trying to bring you guys a bunch of different variations. You know, I give you the bread and the butter that you might see on my channel, maybe Obi's channel or Crossy's channel. Uh, we all have different ways of showcasing it. But then I also try to provide videos that I don't see other people doing whatsoever. You know, I got to have my little creative side over here. But until next time, peace. And I'll have another 40 and 40 coming early next week is the plan. I'm back home. Thank goodness, last weekend, or the previous weekend to this one, I was out of town, and that put me a little bit behind on uh, uh, some of the content. But I'm back. I'm back, boys.